Hello and welcome. I am Gimba Umar. Tonight, aggrieved members of the ruling party form new faction called Reform All Progressives Congress, accuse the APC of failing to deliver good governance. Federal lawmakers reject federal government's decision to share recovered $322 million of battle loot to poor families without National Assembly's approval. French President Manuel Macron meets with business community in Lagos, challenges African entrepreneurs to harness potentials of youth population. And release video confirms 12 boys that their football coach trapped in a Thailand cave are in good health. On business news tonight, global ratings agency Moody's Investor Service says Nigerian banks are resilient but not out of 2016 recession. On sports news, a federal high court in Joss fixes July the 10th for hearing the motions filed by Major Pinnock challenging the ex parte order granted Chris Giwa, who has assumed office as president of the Nigeria Football Federation. begin tonight with politics and it appears the crisis rocking the ruling all progressives congress the apc is far from over a breakaway faction today emerged which goes by the name reformed all progressives congress rapc under the leadership of mr buba galadima members of the faction cite the outcome of the party's recent conviction as one of many grievances they hold against the party leadership at a press conference in abuja the leadership of the group and a former political associate of the president buba galadima accused the APC of failing to deliver on its electoral promises. The NPDP, a group that has made a major contribution to the emergence of the APC administration, has made strenuous and public, for that matter, efforts to invite attention to these inequities, injustice, and poor management in our party without any success. The NPDP had shown good faith and commitment to the party, but it has been rewarded with indifference and even contempt. It is obvious that the leadership of the APC has decided to shut out members of the APC as well as other members who have raised the genuine grievances and a desire to improve the responsiveness of the APC to the desire of members for a party founded on democratic principles. Under the circumstance, patriotic elements and most of the original founders of the APC have found themselves in the opposing side of the charade. Most of the delegates who bought and paid for forms for congresses and convention were elected as delegates have come together to take control and give legitimacy to APC to be now known as and called Reformed APC or otherwise called RAPC. Lawmakers in the House of Representatives are opposing the federal government's decision to share the recovered $322 million of batch of loot to poor families in the country. The lawmakers insist that the federal government cannot spend the money without the approval of the National Assembly. They are also questioning the motive behind the decision, wondering how the government plans to determine which families are the poorest. The lawmakers also want government to disclose how much of the Abuja loot has been recovered in total. Our correspondent Terry Kumi reports. The government of Switzerland returned the sum of $322 million, which it says is the last tranche of the Abuja loot in its custody. The federal government had in June disclosed that it will disburse the recovered money to 302,000 poor households in 19 states starting from July. We have to stop it. What we have the matter is raised in the Green Chamber and lawmakers are opposed to the federal government's decision to share the money without parliament approval. Urgent need to stop the federal executive from expending the last tranche of abacha loot or any recover loot at all without parliamentary approval. Even if they want to do it in accordance with the MOU that we entered into with Swiss, Swiss government, the executive 
should come and seek the approval of the National Assembly. That is the bone of contention. This is not the first time the lawmakers are accusing the federal government of spending without the approval of the National Assembly, and they fear that the wrong precedence is being set. Mr. Speaker, there have been precedents one, precedents two, and precedents three. How many precedents will make it right for the National Assembly to take the right step? They propose that part of the money be channeled towards the completion of the Ajaukuta Steel Company, which is already at 98% completion. We can utilize the federal government share of this fund to complete Ajaukuta Steel Company. This will create a lot of boost in our economy, and it's going to create a lot of job for the people. The lawmakers are calling for an investigation into all the recoveries, and they question why the Switzerland government would tell Nigeria how to spend its own money. So not only is it not constitutional, it makes no economic sense. Nobody, no country has any right to tell us in our country what to do with our funds. We should extend this investigation. How much has been recovered? Then we should also be able to establish how was such money utilized? Then we should also be able to establish how much was paid to lawyers, how much was paid to consultants. Beyond the questions surrounding the recoveries, the lawmakers want the money to be paid into the Consolidated Revenue Fund and distributed to federating units in line with the current revenue sharing formula. Terry Ikumi, Charles Television News. French President Emmanuel Macron has challenged African entrepreneurs to take advantage of its youth population and unlock the economic potentials of Africa. Mr. Macron was speaking at a forum organized by the Tony Elumelu Foundation in Lagos, where over 1,000, uh, 2,000 entrepreneurs from across Africa gathered. Also at the event, the founder of the Tony Elumelu Foundation emphasized that African entrepreneurs hold the key to the continent's transformation. It's President Macron's second day in Nigeria after holding bilateral talks with President Buhari in Abuja and spending the evening at the African Shrine in Lagos on Tuesday. It's good because that's the best way to At this work. gathering of entrepreneurs from 54 African countries in Lagos, the French president is here at the invitation of the Tony Elumelu Foundation to interact with these young business leaders, including beneficiaries of the Tony Elumelu Foundation. I continue need to preach and advocate that entrepreneurship, entrepreneurs, and those they inspire are the lifeblood of Africa's transformation. These young Africans are ready to succeed, and they realize that their success is not just there for themselves, but there for the entire community. In his address, the French president challenges the entrepreneurs to take advantage of Africa's youthful population and change the current narrative about Africa. But Africa is young. I mean, in this state, two-thirds of the population is under 35 yes. in Lagos State. And these young people, this new generation, has a lot of responsibility and opportunities to build. And indeed, what I want to build with you is this new narrative you mentioned. But as well to build through entrepreneurship, economy, digital, culture, sport. It is now time for Mr. McCorn to answer some burning questions from participants. I want to find out if entrepreneurs like myself in Africa just need to look in, inward into African markets. How will you advise Nigerians to achieve their technological dreams in spite of so many challenges? If you succeed given this condition, I can tell you, you will be such a role model that you will convince a lot of people in the region. The Tony Elumelu Foundation is the brainchild of business mogul, Mr. Tony Elumelu. The program, now in its fourth cycle, is a 10-year, $100 million commitment to identify, train, mentor, and fund 10,000 African entrepreneurs by 2024. The French president's visit was not just about meeting with President Muhammad Buhari and young entrepreneurs. It was also about strengthening business ties with Nigerian companies. 
Earlier today, heads of some French businesses in Nigeria and some leaders in Nigeria's business community discussed opportunities for both sides at the French Nigeria Business Forum. Our correspondent Amarachi Ubani reports. The forum is organized as part of activities lined up on the visit of the French president. Opening the meeting was France's Secretary of State to the Ministry of Economy and Finance, Mrs. Delphine Jenny Stefan, who said Nigeria and France have a distorted image of each other, which should not stand as hindrance for future relations. 200 million euros will be mobilized to help setting, uh, to help setting up an efficient public transportation system in Lagos. But in this field, as in others, the private sector has a key role to play, and our companies are ready to offer their help and expertise. Debunking the narrative about the difficulty of doing business in Nigeria, the executive secretary and CEO of the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission, Mrs. Yewande Sadiku, says things have been moving in the right direction. We want to do more with all countries but we want to develop our economy in a way that the oil that Nigeria is blessed with continues to count for what it should. But Nigeria's economy develops in all the ways that it needs to. A few minutes later, at the meeting breaks into a panel of discussion where representatives from French and Nigerian companies highlight business partnerships aimed at improving Nigeria's economy. Participants have mixed reactions to what has been discussed. We can do what we can. Obviously, we know that infrastructure is a big challenge for both Lagos, Nigeria, and a lot of African markets. But I think as we as we um, grow the network in Lagos, we can to see how that service can be extended into other areas where they're not so privileged to have such a, in a you know a significant road infrastructure. We're not a very efficient country. We are very inefficient. Our laws are not very friendly. We do not attract foreign investors like we ought to and when we do we don't keep them I understand Procter and Gamble is leaving the country which is very sad for us and we need to pay attention to things like that in the end agreement is signed highlighting hopes that soon Nigeria will begin to feel the impact of renewed partnership with France Amarachi Ubani Channel Television News in the meantime, Mr. Macron has confirmed that France is planning to host a series of events on African culture for African artists by African artists. The French president offered this assurance when he visited the new African shrine, a nightclub founded by Femi Kuti, son of the legendary Afrobeat star Fela Nicolas Bokuti in the commercial city of Lagos. At the session, which had a mix of light entertainment and talks, Mr. Macron also encouraged young Nigerians to get involved in politics, describing Fela Kuti as not just a musician, but also a politician who wanted to change society. It's a high-profile, highly anticipated visit to the new Africa shrine, home of the Afrobeat legend Femi Kuti. Politicians, past and serving, artists, Nollywood family, other diplomats and regular callers make up the guest list who had to endure a three-hour waiting period. But it was worth it at the end as the president of France, Emmanuel Macron, walks in as promised. It was a moment everyone had been waiting for as they catch a glimpse of Mr. Macron, accompanied by the Lagos State Governor, Akiumi Ambade, and the chief host, Femi Kuti. All right, I do believe. From the moment he took a seat, it was entertainment all the way. the shrine without Afrobeat, as soon after, the four-time Grammy nominee hit the stage with sounds from his horns, his special guest was on his feet. <laughs> Mr. Macron recalls memories of Fela's African shrine that brought him back to the hub. I will not share all his memories, <laughs> and because 
What happens in the shrine remains in the shrine. Yes. <laughs> but I mean, I discovered Nigeria, I discovered Lagos, and once I discovered the shrine. And I have to say, it's something very strong. Obviously, and you reminded it, that's an iconic place. Yes. That's a place where, I mean, the best music were given, and new events always happen. The Lagos State Governor believes that the visit will not only boost tourism, it will further threaten the ties between Nigeria and France. And most especially to Lagos, the fifth largest economy in Africa. It all ends after midnight with the president staying through the events of the evening. Perhaps a special signal to the possibility of stronger cultural ties between the two countries. In part two, after the break, Federal Executive Council approves financial transparency policy guidelines enabling Nigeria to track government income and expenditure. Plus, we'll be joined by cultural communicator Jaman Anikulako to examine potentials for cultural collaboration between Nigeria and France. Please stay with us.